All right, guys, what's good? This is Sonic Soul here, and Street Fighter 6 is finally upon us. It's been about four days now, but I've been playing this game non-stop. I've been playing this shit 10 to 12 hours a day, usually, and I got to the point where I'm a master rank right now. I'm a consistent master rank. I'm number four in the world with this character. I used to be number one in the world with this character. I was there completely fast. So I learned how to play Kami quite a bit from my experience so far. I've gotten a lot of advice from people like Punk and also from people like Shine. So I think I know what I'm talking about. I've been seeing more consistency as of late. I'm ready to kind of give a tutorial now about the character. I need you guys to like the video and please, please hit the notification bell and subscribe to my channel so you get more videos like this. I'm gonna be covering Cami. I'm gonna go over some of her basic things so that way you can get yourself in a better position and not lose all these matches online. So let's just get right to it. What really helped me is I used both the character guides and the combo trials. Both of these for Street Fighter 6 have been very, very helpful in terms of understanding how to play the character in this version of the game as well as understanding some of the basic key concepts and how they apply to Kami. Please try that stuff out as well. That's why they're there. Kami, she's known as a speed type character, so she's very fast. She's effective up close in the close range. That's where she shines. She's not hard per se, but she does have to work. I would say she works pretty damn hard in this game. And you have to be on point in terms of neutral with this character. And that's where you'll get rewarded. So the basic key normals that I want you to really understand. So this is stand forward, stand roundhouse, crouching forward, crouching medium kick, standing short. Okay. Those are some of the main normals I want you to understand. They are all good pokes in the neutral and two of them lead into conversions that you can use to start your offense. The whole idea about Kami, you can see she's very fast. Her movement speed is very, very fast. Her forward walk speed is insanely good. She's got a really good dash, like a very fast dash, 18 frames. Generally speaking, she can move in and out of ranges very efficiently. And what this means is that she can move in and out of your opponent's effective range with their normals. So let's say we're playing the neutral, and I press standing medium kick or standing roundhouse. You can tell that stand medium kick is a very annoying poke at eight frames, so it's pretty fast, right? And standing roundhouse goes further than stand medium kick, and it's also pretty annoying. On punish counter, you get a knockdown. You can use these normals to harass your opponent. Your forward hard kick is also another poke that's cancelable that you can use in the neutral but I would recommend using it only for combos. So what do you do once your opponent's annoyed by these buttons? They're gonna try to jump in on you. So when they jump in on you, you can use normals like Crouch and Heavy Punch, which works pretty reliably for jump-ins that are directly in front of her that are about this range. And the anti is pretty far. So I would say you could use this normal to anti -air, uh jump-ins that are really far. And then you could also use Back Medium Punch. Back medium punch, anti airs in front of Kami, kind of like a wall that they can't jump past, as you can see. They can't jump past it very easily, but you clearly see here, it lacks horizontal range. Around here is where I would recommend doing it. I wouldn't recommend doing it from further ranges as it'll legit just whiff. That's like I said, where Crouch and Fierce shines to replace this button. Now, if they try to go for a cross-up, your back medium punch won't work, despite it hitting directly above her head. So you have to use this like a wall. You can also use Kami's movement to walk back as they jump to anti-air them. I would recommend doing this, doing an air throw. If they're jumping in a range where you can't easily react, just jump back air throw and it'll knock them down and it'll keep them in check. The last anti-air you can use is her trusty cannon spike. They have three different ranges that go really, really far for the heavy version. And the light version is directly like above her, but about around here. See that? The medium version, you can do a little bit further away. And then the heavy version, you can do this from really far, the heavy version. See that? Like really, really far. 
What that also means is that in the corner, if someone neutral jumps, you can anti-air them with this DP as well. What this means is that the heavy version of the cannon spike is really good at stopping neutral jumps. Really, really good. They're all airborne invincible as well on like the first couple of frames. So they're really good for stopping jump-ins. There's also another technique that you can do, which are called cross cuts. Cross cut DP, you perform by doing forward and then half circle back when your opponent jumps over your head. The cross cut DP is very good for being able to stop cross ups, but it's a more advanced technique that I wouldn't recommend doing right away. Cause as you can see, it's a little ambiguous to do it in this game as opposed to other titles. Another thing you can do when your opponent doesn't jump, they'll try to DI you for using these normals. So what I would recommend you do is that when you're around this range and you think your opponent might drive impact you, don't use roundhouse. I would do stand medium kick because it has less recovery than standing roundhouse. And remember also that with drive impact, it depends on when the, the normal hit. When your normal hits late, you can drive impact back. So you can do that. So I would recommend if you're gonna press your heavy normal, just press your DI behind it. And that goes with stand medium kick as well. But I would ultimately recommend you not press this no normal if you think they're gonna drive impact you. I would say you should use standing light kick, which is another poke I mentioned. Around this range, you can use standing light kick to check your opponent. And if you land the stand light kick, you could do drive rush. You can option select the drive rush from coming out if you press stand light kick and forward forward you don't want your dash to come out you just want the forward forward input behind the stand light kick when it reaches your opponent and make contact you can confirm it into a combo crouching medium kick is special cancelable just like stand light kick and if your opponent is going to be doing things like drive impact you can react with drive impact right back same with crouching medium kick you can cancel in the drive impact there's a bit of cancel window frames that you will miss if you're not on point. So just be careful. See, I pressed it late. So you have to press it pretty early. But stand light kick, like I said, is more reliable because the light normal, it recovers immediately. You can react and stop the drive impact that way. Once you've nullified them from jumping in or drive impacting, Sometimes a more wise opponent will start to whiff punish your normals if they're looking for a key normal. See? So what you want to do is you want to whiff punish that normal with your crouching medium kick. And that'll allow you to get started as well. You can use other buttons too, like standing heavy punch. You can also use crouching medium punch, depending on how far you are. But I would say crouching medium kick is your best bet to cancel from. But if you're really good, like I said, you could do stand heavy punch or you could do stand light kick. The point is you want to whiff punish the button if you see it there. Another thing you can do is you can use your dive kick. <laughs> so you can deter your opponent from trying to whiff punish your buttons by using your dive kick as well. See? And you have three different versions of your dive kick, like you have three different versions of your DP. The light one hits very narrow, like it hits really, really narrow. The medium version hits further and the heavy version goes the furthest. You want to aim your dive kicks at your opponent's toes. So like very, very low to the ground. This will give it the most advantage. If you hit it too high, you'll be negative. On block, they're exceedingly negative. So you must space your dive kicks very, very carefully. Otherwise, you will get punished. See, you have three different versions of your dive kick because you want to make sure that you aim at the toes to make it as advantageous as possible. So that way you can prevent your opponent from pressing normals on you when you do your dive kick. So if you're really close, you should be using your light kick dive kick. If you're a little bit further, you can use your medium kick dive kick. And if you're really far, you can do your heavy kick dive kick. See that? 
There's another way from stopping your opponent from just pressing a normal. Now you have to be careful because these dive kicks do not have a very great hurt box. You have to be careful as to how you use them because they're not very great. You have to condition your opponent really hard to look for these things. Now, if you want to get your dive kick to hit as low to the ground as possible, there's two ways. You could do the input manually by doing up forward and then immediately doing cortical back. And you can get it low to the ground, but you have to be fast. The other way is you can tiger knee the input by doing cortical back and up forward. That means that the dive kick will come out on the first possible frame that Kami jumps in the air. Do you see that? That's how you get your dive kicks to be low to the ground. And as a result, it'll be very hard for your opponent to react to these things effectively. Henceforth, why you want to be using the dive kicks up close near your opponent, where it's harder for them to react with a, with a DP or something to like anti-air it. Once you've done any of these things that like I've mentioned to knock the opponent down, either through the dive kick combo, through a low forward, through a whiff punish, you're going to end your combo in spiral arrow. So if you do low forward as a whiff punish in the spiral arrow, you can dash forward in your plus 11. It doesn't matter which way they rise. If you do light or medium, you're plus eight. So what do you do when you land the knockdown in the spiral arrow, right? I would say I would meet you with Crouch and Fierce. So Crouch and Fierce is plus one on block. It's the only plus on block normal that Kami has. So anytime you knock somebody down with Spiral Arrow, you could dash up and do Crouch and Fierce. Crouch and Fierce also has about four active frames. So if you really time the meaty correctly, it can be as much as plus three normally. See that? So as a result, you can frame trap into your crouching jab. You could do that, or you could do a crouching medium punch. But I would recommend doing a crouching jab. The reason why is because if the opponent presses a button after your crouching heavy punch and you do jab, you will beat their mash. See that? And it'll be a counter hit, which means you can convert that into another spiral arrow. So your opponent cannot mash on that. You can also do jab on their wake up. And that'll be a frame trap. This is because jabs chain into themselves. They still have gaps so they can be parried, but they chain into themselves, which means that your opponent cannot press their jab here. <laughs> which means you get a counter hit confirm. See that? So as a result, you have multiple ways to frame trap the opponent and make them respect you on the knockdown now then what does this mean if your opponent stops mashing you can start throwing them on their wake up because they're now conditioned to take the grab and the best part about it is that if you meet the crouch and fierce to be plus three you can throw after So you can do that to beat out their their jab on wake up. And remember that, of course, you're conditioning them to want to actually take the grab because you've been beating them out of their normal. That's more frame tight what I'm showing you to do the crouching fierce into the throw because you kind of have to micro walk to grab them using the plus frames you get from the crouching fierce, which must be timed perfectly. But point is, this is going to be plus on block. Your opponent is not going to want to really mash on this, so you can throw them. And like I said, once your opponent doesn't want to mash on the jab, then you throw them from the jab as well. These are all things you can do to establish the strike throw game, which is going to force your opponent to really consider whether or not they want to press buttons on you. You can even end up doing things like shimmying them which is a technique used to bait throws and reversals. This is very important when trying to get the maximum reward for them trying to tech.
as you can see, you can get rewarded very well for baiting someone's throw. I'm gonna also explain using drive rush on this, this knockdown. So a very common thing you can do is whenever you land a spiral arrow, you can, instead of dashing, use your drive rush and make your crouching heavy punch even more plus. See that? It could be as much as plus eight, which means you can do another crouch and fierce after. In general, what this means is that you want to use your drive rush in situations to essentially make a normal that's usually a little bit plus to be a lot of plus. You could make your standing strong really plus, like plus five, because it's also just as active as your crouching heavy punch. Now, defensively, Tammy does have a reversal. And her reversal is really good, her DP, because she switches sides. And this is very important to get yourself out of tight situations while also switching the position so that way your opponent now has to worry about getting themselves out of the corner that they try to put you in. You also have access to your hooligans. You have three different versions. As you can see, the light version goes all the way up. The medium version goes somewhat forward in the arc and the heavy version it's very, very far forward in an arc. You can use these moves to kind of trick your opponent up and you have four different follow-ups from it. The overhead, which is minus two on block. I would recommend doing it from the heavy hooligan since you're plus eight instead of plus six. The next thing is that you could do is you could do dive kick and it operates the same way, like I mentioned before with your other dive kick that you do normally. You also have a grab that you could do on standing opponents. So if your opponent has to stand up to deal with this, you can do this grab to also knock them down. You can also do the fast fall and an empty low by not pressing anything. The low is actually, I think, plus two on block. The fast fall can be used to bait anti-airs and then punish them for doing the anti-air. So, you should get creative with the hooligan in order to bait certain options. But remember, I wouldn't recommend doing something like this often in block strings or even in neutral because of how vulnerable it is. So as you can see, I'm getting beat out of my hooligan. So I have to mix up which one I'm using. Do you see that? And you can force your opponent to think about which one you're gonna do. Now the EX version of the hooligans are faster and they add all of the EX properties to all the follow-ups. Let's talk about spin knuckle now. Spin knuckle, you have three different versions, the medium and the heavy versions are projectile invincible. This is really good against characters that are trying to zone you. As you can see, you can use it to get past fireballs. Even if you mess it up and you react late to the fireball, you'll be plus three on block, which means you get an actual frame trap. You can also do standing strong in the crouching medium kick. as you can see there. But be careful, if your opponent's looking for it, they'll punish you. The EX version switches sides, as you can see. I could either go behind you, or I could be in front of you. You can use this in the corner to trip up your opponent, or on their wake up when you knock them down. See? In terms of combos, a basic combo that you can do uh, when you start off if you want to hit them low, you can do something like crouch jab, crouch short, crouch jab. The low is going to be in the second hit, and your opponent's going to have to worry about that. And then you convert all of that into spiral arrow. The light kick or medium kick version. The heavy kick version does not work from lights in this game. As you can see, it drops. You have to do light kick or medium kick spiral arrow which still gives you the same Oki that I described before. See? So generally off of lights, you can only do light or medium spiral arrow. 
You can do crouching medium kick in the spiral arrow. Like I said before, that's going to be your main punish tool to get started as well. You need to hit confirm this low forward as well. And I would recommend you set the dummy to go into random guard so you can practice hit confirming. You can also do crouching medium kick into drive rush and you're guaranteed crouching fierce or standing medium punch. I would recommend doing standing medium punch because you can link crouch fierce after it, which will then link crouching medium punch. And you can go into spiral arrow from that as well. When you're up close and you land your crouching jab, you can do crouching jab in the back medium punch. You can't do it from your low because this will whiff. So if you manage to hit your first crouching jab, you can go into back medium punch and then go into the lift upper, which is back heavy kick. What this will do is you can jump cancel that, go into jump medium punch and then dive kick. And what this does is it gives you the same Oki I talked about before. You can also just dash up and do it as well. And it'll be active as hell. It'll be plus four. It'll hit on the last active frame. So that's another thing that you can do as well. Standing Fierce gives you charge DP. Your charge Shoryuken. And of course, this acts as your EX version of the move. So you can do Drive Rush in the Crouch Fierce. Stand Fierce into the DP. You can also just do Standing Fierce. And what that'll do is that'll give you back medium punch into the lift upper into the launcher. You can also do this into the spiral arrow, the charge version. And that'll let you switch sides. You can't do this normally. So you have to do it from drive rush. Some corner combos that you can learn. You can do jump roundhouse into back roundhouse. Then you can do medium spiral arrow into heavy DP. And that's a good that's a good chunk of damage. If you use drive rush, I would do something like this. As it's more damage. You can also do something like this, which is a mission mode combo, actually. That does even more damage than the other combos that I showed you so far in the corner. So now we're gonna go over her supers. The first super that she has is basically combo filler. You're only gonna really use it as, com as a combo tool, like a as a combo ender. You can also use it to avoid strikes. It has seven frames where it's strike invincible, but it won't win against a projectile. The level two super is kind of useful because if they throw a fireball at you, you can use it to punish them. If it hits a grounded opponent, it'll go into animation. If you do it in the air, it goes full screen. You can also do it at the end of combos in the, that use the lift upper. And you actually get to continue your combo. I like to do this from drive brush combos, especially just to look cool. You can kind of do a combo like that, which is almost 5k, if you just want to look cool in style, because this move will not hit the same way on an airborne opponent as it does on a grounded opponent. And then her level three, it's fully invincible for eight frames. So that's the critical art version, which does more damage than, of course, the regular version. This is like basically a full screen super that hits on the ground. And because it's fully invincible, if your opponent decides to throw a fireball, if you can react to the fireball, you can punish it. So it's pretty good for stopping someone from zoning you. You also wanna place it at the end of combos. You wanna end with stand fierce into the charge DP. 
and then do the super. That's where you want to end it. You want to do that as it's the maximum damage. So here's a combo that you can do mid screen. As you can see, it almost does 6K damage. Now here are some setups that I came up with. If you do the dive kick from the hooligan, it's actually really plus. They can't press here. See, they can't press here. So you can do something like that as a good mix up with the dive kick and they can't press a button on the dive kick or also get hit meaty and you get a combo and on block it's also plus. You can also throw them out of their jab. You can also do the overhead as well. And that hits meaty, which means you get a combo. See, if they choose to DP, you have to read it. You get a combo. So this is a really good setup that you could do in the corner to confuse your opponent and get rewarded for keeping them in the corner. The last thing is the safe jump like I mentioned before. You can do this safe jump from standing fierce. And a great way of doing it is either off of a jump in or from a counter hit. But the point is, this is a safe jump. It beats the it beats the jab and it also beats the DP. You get a combo. I showed you guys some setups. I showed you guys some combos. I showed you guys the neutral. I showed you guys how to play this character to the best of my ability. I will say the hardest part about this character is being able to basically stick to your opponent. Once you learn how to stick to your opponent and use the things that I provided in this video, you will be able to at least give your opponent some hell on their defense. So. Yeah, Cammy's a very fun character. She's very rewarding when you put the time in with her, but she's not easy in terms of playing this ground game in a game that's very chaotic. So let me know what you guys think down below in the video. Let me know what you think about Cammy. Do you want to play her? Is this video informative for you? Let me know. And of course, please like the video and hit the notification bell so you know when I upload another video like this by hitting that bell and subscribing. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next one. Be easy, Sonic Soul out.